Hello, it is Saturday, January 29th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday puzzle, the most difficult puzzle of the week, quite possibly. That's that's how it's billed anyway. We'll have to find out if it lives up to the name. Actually, I mean, when I look at this grid, I see quite an open grid, quite a few long answers. It's an it's an airy grid, an expansive grid. So that might that might portend some difficulty. We'll have to see. This um, portentous edition of the Daily Solve is brought to you by benefactors Laura Sexton, Austi Pelisser, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and thank you to everybody who has backed the Daily Solve Patreon campaign at any tier, for any amount, for any length of time. Thank you. I very much appreciate it. And if you'd like to join the ranks of those three benefactors, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve or join at any other tier, any of which get you access to um, all of the past bonus solves as well as the new ones that go up each week. And yesterday I put up the latest mini solve speed solve, the week of mini crossword speed solves. And today, actually, by the time this crossword is out, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you will also have access to the latest New York Times acrostic puzzle. Um, I think of this is maybe the third or fourth acrostic. I think maybe the fourth acrostic I solved for the Patreon. I really enjoy them. I find them very difficult. <laughs> found this one difficult as well, but there's a really interesting curve that happens with the acrostic that's much more extreme than with the crossword. The beginning, the climb is so steep because you have so little to go on. You just aren't able to create crosses the same way you are with a crossword. But then at a certain point, you have so much in the grid that you're able to start flying through it in a way that's very, uh, almost like whiplash. You'll, uh, it's hard to explain what I mean without seeing it. But anyway, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you'll you'll have that latest acrostic up. And uh, I really enjoyed it despite the challenge. So all that said, let's let's move right on to today's crossword. Do, do remain to the end of the video if you'd like to hear the always interesting and informative comments about yesterday's puzzle. But for now, we're going to solve the Saturday crossword. This was constructed by Andrew Reese and Caitlin Reed, um, both experienced New York Times crossword constructors. They've, they've each done a, done a fair number of these, and they've collaborated on this one. So it should be an accomplished construction and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get started. No, no time to waste. This could be a tough puzzle. Okay. Showed derision in a way. Showed derision in a way. Hmm. So sneered or frowned or what? Habitat for the addicts antelope, which can go a year without drinking. Interesting. I don't know, a desert? I mean, that might be too generic. It might be something more specific than that. Food chain initials. So this could be food chain in the biological sense, which was the first thing that my brain lit upon, but it could also be a grocery store chain, for instance, something like IGA, I think is a grocery chain. Um, I'm not sure. Let's, let's keep going. <clears throat> Greeting that means presence of breath. Greeting. Greeting that means presence of breath. Could it be aloha, maybe? I don't actually know the translation of aloha, but it would fit in five letters. And it sort of seems like maybe it's fitting. I'm going to not put it in permanently, but I'm going to put it in just long enough to check some crosses. Upper Midwest town with the world's tallest concrete gnome. Uh, okay, well, I, I have absolutely no idea about this unto itself, but I'm wondering if it's Ames only because, which <laughs> I'm only saying that because there's an A tentatively in the grid and because Ames has come up in the crossword maybe twice in the past few months. And so it's just sort of, I don't even remember what state it's in. It's either Iowa or Ohio. Uh, I think Iowa. Pretty sure it's Iowa. Um, I'm going to just try it while I evaluate the rest of these crosses. Uh, Aloha, by the way, I'm sure most people know this, but I didn't. It's it's the Hawaiian both greeting and also farewell. Um, anyway, opened. Lead, maybe? Maybe this is Aloha. Funny, but not ha-ha funny. Uh, I would have said rye for that, so maybe, maybe actually not Aloha. 
funny, but not ha ha fun. Oh, oh, odd, odd. Right. So you could say, oh, that's funny. That's odd. Yeah, I see. That's better than rye even, because rye could be still more humorous. Area of recession. I'm actually thinking this is aloha. I'm pretty pleased about this. Um, Area of recession. So something is recessed. I mean, it could be a financial recession, but it could be a physical groove or dent. Not sure. Uh, cuidad official. Um, not really sure what this is alluding to. I'm sorry. I'm not really getting the clue. What about this? Winner's circles. Winner's circles. Where's this pick up? And here we have what a cheater might throw. A cheater might throw loaded dice. How about that? So this DD and that look, that was sort of, um, I don't know, there was something about it that was suggestive. And loaded dice, I bet that's right. So loaded dice, dice that have been weighted such that they're more likely to land on a certain number. Subject of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. Is this... Oh, what is this? I know of this, but I can't I can't remember what it actually is. It's not the Trail of Tears, is it? What is this? What is this? What is Silent Spring? Ah, that's infuriating. An actor ruck of HBO's Succession. I don't know. I watched Succession and I I absolutely adore it. I love this program, but I don't know who this is, unfortunately, which is a shame. Leave home. Um move out or depart or what? Relocate or grow up. I don't know. Ah. Connock dwelling. What is this? Interesting. Um, uh, hmm. I don't know. I'm sort of, sort of hit a wall, haven't I? Uh, what about this area of recession? Right. We have this I here now. And here we have a C. Cuidad official. What is that? What does this mean? I'm just not sure what that's, just not really sure what that's getting at. I don't know what the clue is asking for. Pick up. Infer or, here we have bolted, could be ran or ate. You could bolt some food or you could bolt, you could run. It could be either of those. This looks less likely to me with this, this here. What about ran? Pick up. Cuidad official and area of risk. Res- oh, hairline, hairline, receding hairline, which I'm familiar with, unfortunately. Um, and winner's circles. Oh, medals, medals, f- physical circles. You've won a gold medal, for instance. Go gold medals, right? Okay, that, that'd that be the answer, wouldn't it? Oh, oh, DDT. Is that Silent Spring? Yes, that I think that's actually, yes. I don't know why I was thinking Trail of Tears, but um, I think this is DDT, the... Um, the poisonous substance. Uh, okay. Actor Ruck of HBO Succession. Leave home. Go. Oh, go out. Sometimes I'll go through, uh, you know, this this ridiculous thesaurus of possibilities, and I and I'll miss the most blatantly obvious possibility. You're going to leave home. You're going to go out. I suppose leave home does have a connotation of permanently leaving home, not just leaving home for a moment. So I guess it's fair enough that I didn't jump straight to that. I was thinking more along the lines of of uh, giving up your your home, leaving permanently, as opposed to just stepping out, going out. But, oh, and food change missiles might indeed be IGA, which I think stands for Independent Grocers Association or something like that. I believe that might be what it's what it stands for. Okay, actor Ruck of HBO Succession. It looks like Alan, doesn't it? Alan Ruck. That sort of sounds like someone, but I don't know who it is. Who would that be? Maybe it's the financial controller. I can't remember. I don't know. Ticks off. Could be counts, right? You could tick off answers as we fill them into the grid. I count them off. Oh, an igloo. Okay, I thought I thought this was it's so funny. Why didn't I put that? Why didn't I get the word igloo didn't come to mind, but the, the spelling of, of this, um, you know, this ethnic group, presumably, uh, seemed like a, uh, a um, I don't know, it, as someone who's not, not very informed on this, it did seem like the kind of, of spelling 
of ethnic names you get in the region where igloos might be. But for some reason, this actual word didn't come to mind. I don't know why. Opposite of scruffy. Well-kempt or what? I don't know. Parking around back. A back lot. <laughs> Very much not that. But I wonder if it is a lot of some kind. The reason I say it wouldn't be back lot is because you wouldn't repeat a word from the clue in an answer. That That's a, a fairly strictly observed convention, I would say, in, in the crossword. And not just the New York Times crossword. I think that's 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 a largely universal observation. Okay, opposite of scruffy, clean cut? Yeah, there we go, clean cut. Okay. And growth from stagnation. Growth from stagnation, what is that? And what do we have here? Shucks. Halls. So you could... Um, you know, you could shuck an ear of corn, for instance, remove the husks, and you haul, what do you haul? You haul uh, grains. So it's, it's sort of a similar thing. You remove the outer the outer covering. So it's, it's a similar process. And oh, to pick up something is to sense it, of course. Sometimes, again, I really miss the most obvious possibilities here. Cuidad official. So this is something in Spanish, but what is it? Do I have something wrong? I might. Or I'm just missing something very, very obvious. Sorry. Uh, certain landing pad. A heliport, maybe? Where a helicopter could land? Element of heavy metal. Uranium? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it, heavy metal sounds like the music genre, but I'm sus my suspicion is that it won't be. But maybe. I mean, it could be like ululation or something now i was going to think maybe sort of guttural heavy metal scream musically but no it's i don't think it's the musical meaning but it might be i'm not sure something for nothing something for nothing antonym or opposite i'm wondering if there's a if there's a less obvious i mean I'm wondering if there's a wordplay possibility here I mean, we could fit opposite, but that would make heliport wrong, which it's possible. I mean, I suppose this might not be halls, but this does look weird, doesn't it? Halls. Maybe it's not halls. Now I'm getting doubtful about everything. And a certain landing pad could be an aeroport, but I don't think you'd, you wouldn't call that a landing pad, would you? Something that not a single person can go in. Something that, and there's a question mark. So some kind of pun or wordplay is going on here. Something that not a single person can go in. So it's a, a double room or not a single person or dual something. I'm not sure. I don't know. Outburst before a maniacal laugh. An evil plan? I don't know. I'm not sure what this is getting at exactly. Outburst before a maniacal laugh. I don't know. One known for making house calls. And house is capitalized. Is this referring to... So house call, the phrase house calls suggests a doctor. And capitalized house, could that refer to Dr. House from the program Dr. House, which I've never actually seen, but I know of it, starring Hugh Laurie. Um... So I'm wondering if those two doctor inferences are getting at something. One for known for making house calls. House. House is cap. Is there anything else a proper noun house could be getting at? I mean, I'm sure there is. Um, one known for making house calls. I don't know what that is. Sorry. A likely story. Um... So a likely story in quotation marks. So we're probably going to have another phrase that means a similar thing, which is sort of a usually sarcastic, you know, it's sort of a sarcastic reply to an unlikely claim. Um, I doubt it. No. If the U were shifted, <laughs> one letter maybe. Lead into boost. Maybe this isn't heliport. That's annoying. I'm pleased with getting that. Turbo boost? Uh, boy, I am I'm, uh, had some good progress there for a while. 
Uh, direction at sea. Direction at sea. A vast? Something you would yell? A direction, maybe? They're just getting started. And they may be worn with colies. Saris? Sort of piling onto this hypothetical avast. I'm not very confident about it. Although this is an S and 23 down is plural. Gambling venues with a portmanteau name. Um, Cashinos? What a gross word. It doesn't fit, which I'm pleased. Pleased I won't have to put that into this crossword grid here. Almost called this my crossword grid, which it's not. Um, Okay. Something that not a single person can go in. What am I doing here? What about this V? Sort of enticing. They're just getting started. Hors d'oeuvres? I don't know. There's a V, but it's in completely the wrong place. Bygone Japanese coin. Oh. Ray. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It sort of sounds familiar to me as an old Japanese coin. Could that be right? What about this? We've all been there. I, well, it's starting with I is... I can relate? I don't know. They're just getting started. Probably end with an S. Lose something. What is this? Biomaterial RNA. Wow, actually, I'm surprised that that works. I'm sort of skeptical of I can relate, but maybe. Name dropping word. Oh, this is actually working out. So, nay, name dropping word. Nay meaning born in French and used in English to indicate. Um, a name, a former name that that someone, a name with which someone is born that they no longer use. Um, so this is actually sort of working out. Lose sleep or lose sweat. Uh, lose. I'm sorry. This is probably another one of those cases where there's something just screamingly obvious that I'm unable to uh, to discern. Underground line. Underground line. Well, being here in London, my first thought would be the tube, the metro system, subway system, but I don't think any of those fit here. Underground line. Underground line. Um, and local borders. L's, the letter L. We have a question mark, so there's a pun or wordplay going on. And in this case, it's the borders of the word local. In other words, it's bordered by L's, letter L's. And here we have the phonetic spelling of that. So parody. Um, satire or parody of something is a, you could call it a takeoff of it or what? A spoof? I don't know. 46 down, the Lion King role. Nala? Nala was Simba's friend and an eventual partner, I guess, in the Lion King. Is that right? I haven't seen that movie in absolutely ages. Uh, parody... About this, get on is to age. We're getting on in years. We're aging. Aid in getting home. An ID tag, maybe for a, a piece of luggage or maybe a pet. They would have an ID tag. And court feet of twenty two thousand three and twenty fifteen. Oh, Serena Slam. Okay, I don't actually, I don't actually know this phrase, but it looks really plausible here. Serena Slam. Uh, Serena Williams, of course, the great tennis player. Sounds like the kind of phrase that would have been invented um, to describe an impressive feat. Uh, she probably won, you know, I don't know, all of the major tournaments or four of the major tournaments or something like that. Uh, underground line. Oh, a seam. You could have a seam of, um, you know, of a mineral, precious metal or something like that. Oh, lose steam, of course. Why didn't I? Why don't I think of these incredibly obvious things sometimes? Uh, so loose steam looks right. And here we have parody. Oh, a send up. Yes. Okay. So I take off. I thought of not send up, which is the other, the other similar way to refer to a parody. And so I was wrong. Big deal. Sue me. Okay. And compounds containing molecular variants. So I, so is it isomers or isotopes? Isomers because isotopes wouldn't fit. So I've, um, I've made up for my lack of, uh, scientific knowledge here with a bit of grid inference. Okay, isomers, right. And isotopes are atomic variants rather than molecular. I mean, I suppose molecules includes atoms, but yeah. 
Isotopes are sort of variations of elements. Isomers would be of molecules that are themselves compounds con con consisting of multiple elements. I guess that's the distinction. Certain landing pad. All right. So if it's still a hell is something, heli loop, heli drop. I don't. I guess I'm no longer confident about the heli part. What about this element of heavy metal? Oh, right. Maybe it is uranium. I, I dismissed that immediately. But maybe it actually is the case. Is uranium a heavy metal? Probably. And actually, that would allow boost to be turbo boost. Okay. This is looking all right. Second incarnation. A reboot, maybe? In a very sort of current phrase. Curler's equipment. Brooms? Is that what they call their implements in the sport of curling brooms, maybe? Cousin of a kite, an osprey. So this would be a kite the bird as opposed to a kite the, I don't know, the toy, I suppose you'd call it. Style of music whose name is derived from scat. Oh, bop, maybe. Um, a form of jazz. And second incarnation, maybe this is reboot, actually, would that be? Access point, could it be a moor? Is it an, you've moored your boat, access point? Not sure. New York City. Oh, oh, I see, New York City. So city is not capitalized. So this is a city in the state of New York, not the city of New York. Uh, is Nome a city in New York? I'm not sure. The kid in 2010's The Karate Kid. Well... I haven't seen 2010's The Karate Kid. I actually haven't seen the original Karate Kid either, but I assume that wouldn't have been a help since they specified the 2010 one. Site for shopping small, Etsy, perhaps. Um, handmade, handmade goods, or at least that's the intention. I think often not actually the case, but, but still often it is. Okay, so, oh boy, that's unfortunate. Uh, oof, this is sort of... Uh, sort of a tough cross for me actually now because we've got New York City. So what could this be? It could be Gnome, but I think Gnome is in Alaska. So I don't think it's Gnome. Is there a Rome in New York? Access point. Oh, why did I think that was more when it could be door? <laughs> the most obvious, at least internal access point that exists, a door. So this could be D, that doesn't look right. It could be Dre, which would make this Rome. Is there any other things this could be, actually? You know, I'm kind of looking at the possible letters, and I actually don't really see any other plausible options. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at, the, looking at my keyboard to sort of, I don't know, help myself out a bit in terms of available letters. Uh, I actually don't really see anything plausible that isn't R. I mean, it could be something unusual, like Eom, but I really don't think it is. Okay, I'm going to say it's Dre. We'll remember, if I if the puzzle doesn't validate, we'll remember that that was a, a tough spot. Okay, something for nothing. A free ride. How about that? Cuidad official. I'll, hmm. Something that... Sorry, this is going to be something that I, I'm, I really should have known and that I didn't, and it's just sort of embarrassing. Okay. But for now, I'm going to keep looking. Uh, something that not a single person can go in. Blank artist, film professional. Uh, I'm not sure. That's how we roll. Looks right. Non-human host of a talk show on HBO Max. What? What on earth does that mean? Non-human host of a talk show on HBO Max. Is there an animal, an animal talk show host or something? Oh, is it Elmo? Oh, maybe it is. Because I do remember several years ago seeing some news that Sesame Street struck a deal to air on HBO, or H maybe it was HBO Max, I don't know. So is there possibly a off with Elmo? It, maybe. Outburst before a maniacal laugh. Oh, mine, all mine. Okay, so sort of a stereotypical 
I don't know, evil genius or, or dastardly mastermind kind of exclamation. And what is this? Certain landing bed. Oh, helit, helis stop? Certain landing bed. Is that a, is that a phrase? Heli stop? Is that sort of a, sort of the equivalent of a bus stop for incredibly wealthy people? Is that what that's? Uh, I don't know. One known for making house calls. Oh, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, and that's why, Speaker of the House, so that's why House was capitalized, because it refers to the House of Representatives. That's an incredibly clever clue. That's an incredibly clever clue with a bit of misdirection, because I really was wondering, House being capitalized makes it look like a name, like a person's name. And then the phrase house call is associated with doctors. I mean, it could be other professions as well, but it's, I think, most classically associated with doctors. And so I really was thinking there was something around Dr. House, or maybe the name of the show is not Dr. House. Maybe it's House MD or something like that. But anyway, um, that's that's very clever. There's some, there's some quite clever things in this puzzle in general, actually, to be honest. Um, what were some other really good clues. Winner's circles, gold medals. I think that's that's extremely clever. Uh, area of recession, hairline, quite clever. Uh, oh, right. I forgot about this. Something that not a single person can go in. Oh, a lane, a carpool lane. How about that? So this is Alcalde. I don't know. Is that a referee? I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, but this is another very clever clue. Something that not a single person can go in. This is very, because I was trying to think, let's say it were, I mean, this didn't fit, but I'm just, as an example, let's say it was a double room or a king size bed or something that's designed for more than one person. But I was thinking, but you could have a single person in those things. So what is something that a single person can't go in? I was trying to think of things that need at least two people and a carpool lane is one of those, also often called HOV for high occupancy vehicle, I think, um, which is a, um, a highway, a lane on the highway that that requires you to have more than one person in the car in order to use it. Uh, very clever clue. So there's a, there are quite a few very clever things in this in this puzzle, I think. Okay, storybook bear could be Papa Bear from Goldilocks and the Three Bears, and oh, foley artist, film professional, right? So a foley artist is someone who uh, records the um, the sounds that are then dubbed onto a film. So foot, footsteps, the most most obvious example, but also things like oh, you know glass smashing or leaves crunching underfoot. They all all of those sounds that typically aren't actually um, you know they're usually layered in rather than captured at at the time. And foley artists have all kinds of clever ways they do that by you know, crinkling foil and all and all sorts of things to mimic these sounds. I remember uh, the uh, foley artists who worked on um, the Indiana Jones films. You know they would do these crazy things to create the sounds of the punches in those films. These really big meaty punches, and they'd have big sides of beef and things like that that they'd be hitting. I think. Okay, kidlit authors uh, Margaret and H. A. I don't know. These sort of sound familiar, but I, but I'm not confident enough to to put something in there. A likely story. Oh, okay. Well, disambiguated it right here. A likely story. So you say. Oh, oh right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I put an S in there. Uh, oh, have I not looked at this clue yet? Uh, Chichen Itza's carvings, e.g., Mayan art. Not my. Okay, I was wrong about the bygone Japanese coin. Sorry. Um, that's Ren, not Ray. So I, I misremembered that. I was right about the R E, but not the I. I'm um, glad I got that. I'm glad I I found that. Oh well, this looks wrong as well. No, I was wrong about everything. Look at that. They're just getting started, novices. I was completely incorrect the entire time. <laughs> the only thing that I had right was the thing I got from the cross. So look at me, bygone Japanese coin Ren. All right. Well, I'm glad I noticed that anyway. And here we have uh, gambling venues with a portmanteau name. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I can, I can see the portmanteau in that it ends with enos, as in casinos, and then there's a C here. So obviously it starts differently, but I'm, I don't know that I know whatever this phrase is, or if I do, I can't bring it to mind, but it's quite possible I don't know it at all. Parking around back, a, a rear lot maybe? I mean, that's, I guess, as straightforward as it can be. Oh, racinos? That's a 
that's a gross word to say. I don't like saying it. Um, is that maybe casinos based around horse racing or something? I wonder. I mean, this could be wrong. Obviously, it could be something else. Growth from stagnation. Don't know. Habitat for the addicts antelope, right? Maybe it is a desert. It's, it seems too generic for such a specific... It's giving a specific species, so we sort of surprised if it was as generic as desert, but but maybe. What about this? Catchy communication, for short. Catchy communication, for short. Not sure. Vivuzula, for one. This was the... Ah, no, it's probably not desert. I'm going to delete Rulot and Racinos as well. I don't like any of it. Uh, I can put clean cut back in, though. I'm confident about that. So anyway, what was it I was just looking at? Oh, Revisla for one. That was a horn, right? Those were those incredibly irritating horns that I think they started at a... Well, I, I'm sure they started ages ago, but I think internationally they came to great prominence. Was it a World Cup in Brazil or South Africa? I think it might have been South Africa. I can't quite recall. Anyway, they were incredibly irritating and I think were eventually banned by FIFA or something. Uh, shoe hue, tan maybe, you could have a tan shoe, I don't know, um, showed derision in a way, oh, spat, yeah, okay, that's a way to show derision for somebody, to condescend to them, it's subject to inflation in the auto industry, air something, inflation, a tire, what, air what, I don't know, power forward, and, oh, cantata number. It could be an aria. So a cantata is like an opera, but it's not fully staged in the same way. So it's similar in that it's a story being told through music, but it's not the sort of big all-encompassing, all-encompassing, um, all-encompassing, sorry, uh, production. I think Wagner referred to opera as total art because it, it, it involves all of the, sort of all of the artistic disciplines almost, or that sort of way of thinking about it. Oh, oh, the Sahara would, okay, this, this, this is the sort of thing that I was wanting this to be, and indeed it seems it is. Habitat for the Attic Antelope, which can go a year without drinking. That is astonishing, a year, wow. Anyway, the Sahara Desert, so there we go. It is a desert, but it's more specific than that, which is what I wanted. And so what was this? Power forward. Oh, propel. So you could propel something, you could power it forward. And here we have catchy communication for short. APB, oh, APB, here's another very clever clue. So catchy communication for short, and we do have the question mark, so it's some sort of pun or wordplay. And we're hoping to catch somebody, a suspect, for instance. And so the um, dispatcher will put out an APB in all points bulletin, and that will say, everyone, we're looking for this person. We're trying to catch them. It's a catchy communication. It's subject to inflation in the auto industry. Air... Here's one that I'm sure is screamingly obvious and I'm just not seeing it. Air what? Air infuriating. <laughs> so maybe the park parking along back is indeed a rear lot and air... Why do I not see it? Growth... Oh, oh, airbag. Okay. I was really... It's The reason I couldn't think of this is because I was so focused on uh, tires. But of course, another thing that is inflate... See, another very clever clue because the most obvious thing to inflate in the auto industry or in something surrounding automobiles, cars would be tires. But of course, an airbag is also, also inflates. It just inflates suddenly instead of gradually like a tire. And the reason I, <laughs> I got there was not because I thought of it <laughs> cleverly myself, but because I saw growth from stagnation must be algae, uh, the green, green growth on stagnant water, for instance. And that does Indeed, confirm gambling ventos with a portmanteau name as Racinos, which I'm not crazy about, but what can you do? They can't all be winners. Uh, so there we have it. There's the Saturday puzzle. And I think the very clever, very clever crossword, really good, long, interesting answers, loaded dice, gold medals, carpool lane, mine, all mine. That's very, see, here's another thing. It's such a silly, it's a sort of goofy answer, but it's, it totally, it, it really is one of those stereotypical sort of tropes that you'll see in a film or whatever, mine all mine, before a maniacal laugh. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually quite fitting once you see it. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, subject of a great bit of misdirection, this house calls thing. I think that's incredibly clever. Um, a likely story, so you say, that fits well. We've all been there. I can relate. It's a bit more straightforward. And then Court Feet of 2003 and 2015, I'm pleased I was able to get this without 
necessarily already having that knowledge. I mean, it, I guess I still had to have heard of Serena Williams, but she's pretty internationally renowned. So that that seems that seems fair enough. Um, very clever, very clever crossword. Um, there is sort of an art to. I, I remember when I started doing this series, and I started I, before I started doing the series, I really had no exposure to the. It sounds like a silly thing to say, but genuinely to the sort of crossword solving world, the community of people who solve crosswords, I just was unaware of it beyond solving the crossword myself. And I've I've learned in the months of doing this series that um, there's sort of a whole realm of appreciation around themeless puzzles, which isn't really something that ever would have occurred to me before because the themed puzzles seem like Oh, I see. Well, there's sort of something to talk about there. What is there to talk about with a themeless puzzle? I mean, they filled the grid. What? I, but I, I've really, since doing this series, I've really grown to appreciate a well-constructed themeless puzzle with the sort of range of answers. You know, we have current current events, things like Nancy Pelosi and Serena Williams. We have um, just sort of collections of word words from language, like I can relate and um, so you say. We have uh, clever puns and bits of and bits of wordplay things like area of recession leading to hairline and subject to inflation in the audio industry airbag things like that i mean there's just there's just a whole range and just an interesting collection of words and very well clued and without without there being a theme to around which to construct the whole puzzle there's sort of more of a requirement to have that kind of cleverness threaded throughout because there that's that's all there is and i've really gained I've gained a lot of appreciation for that. And it's not something I ever really, to be honest, thought about much in the years I'd been solving the New York Times crossword. So I do enjoy it quite a bit. Okay, so well done, Andrew Rees and Caitlin Reed. And that's the Saturday puzzle. So let's let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. How about that? The Friday. Uh, Kathy Swope confirms that Ritz Bits are indeed the teeny the tiny bite-sized versions of Ritz cracker sandwiches in cheese or peanut butter varieties. The name sometimes is spelled with a Z instead of an S as in the puzzle answer. Uh, makes sense. And James Dickey explains that a base jumper, the base in the sport, the extreme sport of base jumping, as it was clued in yesterday's puzzle, stands for building antenna span and earth. Fascinating. So the span meaning a bridge and earth meaning cliffs. So I suppose these are the things off of which you jump. You jump off a building, off an antenna, off a span or a bridge or off the earth itself, off of cliffs. And uh, what a funny, strange acronym. <laughs> ben Ward replies, thanks, I hate it. Uh, Bice Dibley, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous that I couldn't come to this conclusion myself, but I didn't. Anyway, Bice Dibley says, I'm sure you can get inflatable pool toys that look like sharks, but I suspect the meaning in, uh, in the puzzle of pool shark was the sense of someone who hustles pe people at pool, the cue and ball game. Yes, of course it is. That's obviously what a pool shark is. Why on earth was the first thing I thought of an inflatable shark? I, I have no idea. Um, obviously, I know the phrase pool shark, but it completely departed my mind in the moment. It's this funny phenomenon that happens to me when I'm doing these videos. Is sometimes my brain just, it just floats away like a, like a pool shark filled with helium. And um, I lose my, my ability to, to reference the vocabulary memory banks. Anyway, that's that. That's the clues from yesterday's puzzle. That's today's crossword solved. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. Very much appreciate it. And if you know someone who enjoyed, who, well, well, if you know someone who did enjoy this, say, we'll keep watching it and subscribe to it. But furthermore, if you know someone who you think might enjoy it, you speculate, may enjoy it, pass it on to them as well, either directly or through your online community of choice. I'd very much appreciate that as well. Uh, like I often say, because it's true, the word of mouth is really the only, the only tool I have to spread the word. Um, that and I suppose people liking and subscribing to these videos to help push them into the into the cold, steely gaze of the YouTube robot. And uh, I suppose that's it. I will be back tomorrow for the Sunday crossword, the long, leisurely Sunday solve. So do come back for that. Join me for that. And um, if you are a Patreon subscriber, check out the latest uh Mini puzzle speed solve and that new acrostic, and also my next and my the next thing I want to do for the Patreon feed is the latest round of Constructor's Corner um, 
crosswords, the constructors corner the channel in the daily solve discord chat server. So there's, there've been enough of those to, um, to justify a new roundup video of all of those. And I'm very excited to do, to solve those. So look out for that if you're a Patreon subscriber. Anyway, I'll be back tomorrow for Sunday. Join me then until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm-hmm.